I've attached the 70 denier to the hook shank. I'm now I'm going to bring in the dumbbell eyes. I prefer to slide them in with the hook technically upside down. Secure them with a wrap or two. And then what I like to do prior to really, really attaching them is to bring in a little drop of Zappa Gap. I'm going to place that on the bottom of the hook shank there at the tying point. And then I'm just going to use kind of crisscross wraps and alternate about three or four wraps at a time until that's nice and snug and secured. Once I have that secured, I'm going to return the thread to the hook shank, rotate that guy upside down, and I'm going to wrap back and up the hook bend. At this point, I'm going to bring in a small clump of the SLF dubbing, and we want this to extend about a half inch past the hook bend. I'm very simply, just going to come in here, secure it with a couple wraps. Work it up the hook bend just a little bit and then ensure that those longest fibers are at least about a half inch out. I'm now going to bring in my first strand of the rubber legs and I want to ensure that I have two of these fibers sticking out in the front in the imitation of the antenna. And I'm very simply going to drape this over the thread. I'm going to slide it down to the hook shank to secure it and then play with it a little bit with my hands just making sure that I get a strand on the left and a strand on the right. And I can use this to kind of straddle the hook shank. Once I have those in place, I rotate it upside down again, snip those to a length of about an inch, a little, little bit longer maybe. I'll let those hang there. Now I'm going to bring in my pine scroll strip. For this pattern, I've already pre-cut this. Very simply taking some fine point scissors and I've cut this down the middle. You want the length from the V, the notch here out to the ends to be about three quarters of an inch. And for this particular pattern, we're gonna take it and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide that V right over the hook shank. I'll give you a little bit of a view. So I'm gonna slide that notch right into that spot right there where I finished with the last tie off. And you're gonna have to work this a little bit the moist fingers come into play once again we're going to moisten that fur just to kind of pull it back and out of the way moisten the other hand bring that forward a little bit now once i have that work area fairly cleared i can take my thread and i can secure that with a couple of firm wraps get one more wrap in there So that's secured, you can kind of pull that strap out of the way. Throw down a couple nice tight wraps there. Now I'm gonna bring in a little swax and apply a little bit of tack to that thread. And then I'll pluck some sparse fibers off the edge of a clump of the SLF dubbing. And I'm very simply gonna create a thin dubbing rope. Once I have that dubbing rope created, I'm going to start right there at the base of the strip and I'm going to wrap rearward toward the dumbbell eyes. I want to stop about one to two hook eye widths in front of the dumbbells here. When I've reached that location, I'm going to rotate the hook upside down. I'm going to come in with the next set of legs here. Now ideally our finished product, we want a leg coming off to the left to the right and one down the middle, all relatively on the bottom of the hook shank. So for the left and the right legs, I'm going to take a strand of the rubber legs here. Once again, straddle that thread, secure it to the shank, and then I'm going to ensure that I get one leg down the, the far side and one leg down to the near side of the hook shank here for me. So I have those secured, I'm going to bring in one more strand, and this leg is going to run right down the bottom in the middle. Catch it with some thread there, secure it, ensure that it runs down the middle of the body, 
I'll just wrap over that little excess there. So looking at these, I'm going to snip these off just short of the length of the pinchers. As we move on here, we're going to get ready to create a dubbing loop with the pine squirrel fur. Now, Matt prefers to use a Petitjean clip, a plastic clip uh, that comes in. And similar, if you've watched the video on the Hellraiser leech, the clip essentially grabs the ends of the fur and allows you just to come in and trim those off. I'm just going to use the pressure on my fingers uh, to introduce those into the loop. So before I start that process, I'm going to take a little bit of swax, apply a little tack to my thread here. And then once I've done that, I'm going to get those fibers in my fingers, trim them off with my scissors. And as we introduce this, we're looking to have about a half inch of the pine squirrel sticking into the loop. So I'm going to close this off. And then very simply, I'm going to keep it open with one finger. I'm going to introduce those fibers into the loop. Once I have them trapped, go ahead and spin that. I'm not looking for a ton here. I need enough fur to take two, maybe three wraps, depending on how the loop plays out. Spin that in nicely with my fingers. Uh, as for other videos that you've seen of mine, I prefer to grab a hold of that with those rotating hackle pliers. So I'm going to come in and secure that. Get a hold of those. And now I'm ready to wrap this forward. So I'm just going to kind of hold these legs down, forward and out of the way. And as I bring this around, um, I want to make sure that once I do start to lay down fibers, uh, I take my left hand and very simply brush those fibers back toward the bend of the hook. And that's just going to prevent the excess fibers from becoming trapped. So I'm going to take one wrap there, second wrap, finish it out here. There we go. You can see the area is nice and covered on the bottom there. Bring that excess up and just catch it with one or two nice snug wraps. Cinch it down nice and secure and then drape that thread over the back end. Come in and snip that off. I'm going to moisten my fingertips here. Just kind of brush those stray fibers out of the way. Then I'm going to grab that pine squirrel strip. I'm going to bring it right back over the top of the dumbbell eyes. Come in about where I want it, just a little bit shy of the hook eye here. Part that thread. And then the moistened fingers again come into play. They allow me to brush those fibers kind of back and out of the way so I can see what I'm aiming for here. I'm going to get this with a nice secure wrap here. Snug it down. One more wrap in there. And then I'm going to come and I'm going to drop that wrap right behind the hook eye. I'm going to come in with my fine tip scissors. Snip this free here. It's a pretty tight little window to work in. Moisten my fingers one last time and brush those back out of the way of the eye. 70 denier is very helpful right here. It's going to allow me to close this off. I want to pay attention to the eye of the hook here so that I don't overwrap it with thread. So I'm going to stick the nose of my bobbin right in there. I'm going to apply a firm amount of pressure and you can see that pine scroll strip just kind of compresses under the pressure of the thread. Once you have that nice and secured, Eye the hook still insured, everything's nice and secured. We come in and whip finish the fly. The last step, just for the sake of durability, we come in with a little bit of zap a gap. I rotate that upside down. Hit the back side of this. A little bit on the left edge. A little bit on the right edge. We've got it all wrapped up. Set that to the side, let that dry, and you'll have a very capable and ready Hellraiser Crawdad.